Hey, this is Jesse Canton. Man, I am so glad that you took the time to download this podcast. Listen, it's getting ready to be a blessing to you. It is power packed full of wisdom. Listen, as you hear this episode and you maybe you want to be a blessing to this podcast, well, you can hit me up on Cash App. Type in Jesse E. Canty, J-S-S-E, the letter E, C-A-N-T-Y, with the dollar sign, of course. And you can be a blessing. Anything you give will be appreciated. I thank you, and I pray that nothing but God blessings and his best be upon you. Take care. Hey, this is Jesse Kent with another episode of How Bad Do You Want It? Listen, this episode is going to be a little bit different than what I normally do, but I want to just kind of share what's on my heart. I want to talk to the people who have been driven to accomplish or pursue their destiny. Listen, my song is not just a theme song. I'm trying to dedicate my life to helping people become what God wants them to be. And I want to talk to you and give you some advice on how do you get there and just give you a little grandfather word wisdom. Is that all right? Listen here. I want to call this one right here. Destiny driven. Check out this theme song. Yeah, man. Man of wisdom. Man of wisdom. From the pulpit to the podcast. From the pulpit to the podcast. To the podcast. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of How Bad Do You Want It? I am your boy, Jesse E. Canty, man, and I'm so grateful to have an opportunity to talk with you again today. Listen here, this is episode number 168, and I got something to say, man, and let's get on to this thing. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray right now that though you have placed this upon my heart to talk about destiny and practical steps, God, I pray that you continue to lead me and guide me, Father, um, what does it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? So, Father, let us keep you as our foundation and as our power source that we hear from you to make the move that we need to make in this life, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Listen to that prayer. That prayer is very uh, profound, to, I believe it is, because what I'm talking about here, and I want to I start off with the foundation. Allow me just for about 20 minutes to build something here, and I want to start at the foundation, and I know different people, there's so many, so much uh, uh, information out there on how to succeed in life, and it's a lot of them is powerful. A lot of them is wonderful and good word, uh, but I like to do talk about how to succeed and how to reach your destiny. And I'm going to articulate a little bit, a little bit better in a minute, but I'm, I cannot talk about pursuing your destiny and not start with the foundation. The foundation is what I, that prayer I just prayed. What does it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his soul? Listen here at the end of the day, if you have a million dollars, if you become the president of the United States and you fail to have a relationship, a true relationship with Jesus Christ, give him your your life. He become your Lord and Savior. Then your life has been, will, will, will eventually you'll see your life has been determined a failure. Because I believe that's, you know, I, you can say, well, everybody's not a Christian. I believe that. I believe I got people who listen to me that's not Christian, but my part of my destiny, I'm going to talk about destiny in a minute. My part of my destiny, part of my assignment is not just to have a podcast and give you good word on how to become something in life. We talk about that. That has its place. But my assignment is to represent Christ in with everything I do. See, a lot of people, especially the entrepreneurs who are going into the marketplace, you can't be so driven to succeed the way you put God in the back room. You put your you put your 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 secret weapon in the back room. You want to get out there and get your day in the spotlight, but you don't bring the you don't bring Christ to the light. And even though I know he is the light, you don't. I've seen that they, 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 they started out talking about God or, and I don't mean you have to preach to people, but we ought to see your assignment. Uh, and then when they get to a certain stage, all of a sudden now it becomes more predominant about them. And then instead of, we don't even know who we don't even know if you're a Christian or not. And, and that's just me personally. That's my opinion. I'm not, I'm not going out to nobody that what, what, good is it if I 
do all the things I want to do in life. And I don't, my life, here it is now, my life doesn't help win anybody to Christ. There are some people that you have the power to influence and persuade. And I don't mean in a negative way, though that can be used too. There are some people who you who looks at you and it inspires them to become better in life. Well, our life is supposed to inspire people or point to Christ. I, that's why I am a big advocate of sharing uh, my uh, my good and my bad and my ugly. Because it may embarrass me, it may debase me a little bit, but as long as it helps somebody, I'm telling you, it's well worth it. Now, when I talk about destiny driven, at the end of the day, I believe, yes, we are here. And the foundation is that you should and that you must find Christ. This, this, I'm going to get this off the top right now. You must find Christ. I pray that people who listen to me, if you don't know Christ, get to know Christ. That you're able to say, hey, I want to give my life to Jesus. He's my Lord and Savior. He is the only way I can get to heaven. He's the only way I can draw to God. I cannot come to God no other way except through his son, who God sent for our sins, to die on the cross. Not only he died on the cross, he was resurrected. And I can go on and on and on about this, but this is the foundation. This is the root of the word destiny in my dictionary. And I'm talking about my personal dictionary. And I and I highlighted, listen to this theme song because I wrote that theme song. Uh, 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 Logan's, uh, what's my man's name? He sung it. He sung the thing song, but but man, and done an outstanding job singing that thing, man. But I'm telling you, uh, Darian Logan, Darian Logan sung that theme song, done an outstanding job. So us together, I didn't just do that because it sounds good. I was talking about how God moved and shifted my destiny. It wasn't nothing wrong with the pulpit, but for me, I found my assignment. Well, your assignment wasn't a pulpit. My assignment has been given by me before the foundation of this world. I was walking in an assignment many years before I even became a pastor. But the season, the timing for me had shifted. And I heard the Lord tell me from the pulpit to the podcast. When I started sharing with certain certain people what my move was going to do and what I felt. And I felt that three years before I did anything. I prayed on it. Because destiny decisions are detrimental decisions. You should not just talk to somebody who don't know half of what they're talking about. They lost themselves and they start telling you, I think it sounds good to me. You ought to quit your job. Don't make destiny decisions talking to dummies. So I talked to God for about three years. And eventually, make a long story short, because this I'm going to go deeper into this. When I felt compelled that I feel that this is the way the Lord is leading me. I got many opinions, many people who discourage me, many people who try to tell me you can't do that until you find somebody to pass the ministry out to. And they tried to give me scripture that did not make sense. I had to find out God was showing me, listen here, don't you listen to what people say. When you sense a shift in your life, you better make it. You better follow what God tell you to do. And you got to be big, bad and bold enough to accept the criticism and keep doing what God told you to do. If you can't accept criticism or if you can't hear it and keep on stepping, you will never reach your destiny. What is destiny to some people? Destiny is different from what I'm getting ready to tell you, but I'm going to give you my definition for destiny. My definition is that for destiny is finding what you was sent here to do. Finding the path that God had determined for you to walk on. Becoming who he created you to be and getting in place where he wants you to be. That is destiny to me. That is the design, uh, divine design 
that God have created. And somehow, which through the Holy Spirit, I, we found it through prayer and through being sensitive to his leading. I found where I'm supposed to be. When you find your destiny path, you will hear all types of voices. You will see all types of enticing commercials. And I don't just mean TV. I'm talking about things that's previewing and showing you why you should go follow somebody else's path. It'll give you money. It'll make you have. Don't you want three, four houses? Don't you want to do vacant? You hear all the stuff that people come tell you. Won't you do what I do? I can't stand that statement. I have grown to cannot stand that statement because people do not understand I'm not here to do what you do. You're not here to do simply do what I do. You are here to find your path. Pursue your God given destiny. Let me break destiny down one more time. Destiny is like you start a new race that you don't know where you at. You never raced that race before. You don't know the pathway. You don't know anything, but you do. You're trying to find the line that says finish line. And just stay within the cones and stay within the lines, stay within the, the markings that, that have been placed for you. And when you, you will know that finish line, when you see it, that's when you have reached your destiny. And I got to tell you, this is why when I was again, when I put that theme song together, it says from the pulpit to the podcast, uh, uh, got my name. How bad do you want it? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, thank you for taking the time to listen to this podcast. God has blessed us to have listeners all around the world. And I thought to myself, I said, maybe there's somebody that wants you to have a prayer request. that wants you to pray with them concerning anything, your family or whatever it is. If that's be so, listen, drop me an email at jessecantypodcast at yahoo.com. J-S-S-E-C-A-N-T-Y podcast at yahoo.com. I would love to hear from you. I love to pray with you. And I want you to have a blessed day. Pursuing my destiny. My, my theme for my, my men, when I was pastoring Living Waters Christian Ministry, this is what the mantra was, uh, flowing towards your destiny. That's what I came up with in 2003. That's what God gave me. So really, if you want to understand this, my life have always been about pursuing your destiny. Flowing towards my destiny. That's what I knew before I traveled to any country. Before I pastored any people, when I was in the house, I told my wife, God told me to call this ministry Living Waters Christian Ministry. And the same way that water is rushing to a certain place, our mantra is going to be flowing towards our destiny. So I've always been destiny driven. And I believe this is what we all supposed to be, but we don't have too much conversation to think about it. Are you, the listener, destiny driven? And if you are destiny driven, make sure you're chasing the destiny that's been designed to you by God or from God. And let me tell you, if you are destiny driven and you do believe you're on the right path and you're not just persuaded by dollar bills and you're not just persuaded by material gain and you're not just persuaded. I want to be a celebrity. I want to be well known. That's that's something that can get you lost. Do not chase fame. And one of the reasons you don't need to chase fame and riches, because this was the very thing that Satan in the wilderness offered Christ and Christ denied it. He said, I give you all of this stuff. Took him on the mountain, the pinnacle of the mountain and showed him all the world and the glory. And he said, I give all this to you. I make it known. I give you all the things you want. Christ basically told him, man, I, my will is to do what God sent me here to do. And that's Christ saying, I'm going to pursue my destiny. And if you're going to be destiny driven in life, every morning you wake up as you listen to this podcast, I'm not, I'm, I don't want you to hear this podcast so you can, so you can get to know me and, and who I am and how articulated I am, which I'm not that articulated, but you get my point I'm trying to make. I want you to hear this podcast and it should be fuel for your journey. 
It's not the ultimate reason you're going to reach your journey. Number, number one, nobody but God is the reason you're going to reach your journey. Number two, you because you're obedient to him. And number three, God uses people to come along and help top your tank off every now and then. Let me put this inside of you and top your tank off and tell you that God wants you to know that you got to be destiny driven. But you also have to understand there are no shortcuts to success. Now, let me back up with the last part. I said, what is God's idea of success? It is not the, the same uh, standard that the world uses as success. He told you, he said, "Blood, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prosper. So if you're going to be successful, number one, your soul must first be prospering. You ought to be giving your life to Jesus because some people are going to skip past this and take the advice on the back end. But you got to have your soul prospering. Then he wants us to prosper and wants us to be in good health. Wants us to have a wonderful family. God didn't just, he, he placed you here with an assignment on your life. Oh, I'm going too slow. Let me get on to this thing. There are no shortcuts. Do not look for shortcuts to success. You have to work harder than anyone else and never give up. Now, mind you, now I'm moving past the foundation. So once you have given your life to Jesus, once you have you're, you're, you're praying to him, you're confessing your sins. You're walking with God. You are, you're not ashamed of it. This is He is the one. It's important because he is the one knows where your finish line is at. Nothing else can tell you your finish line. Wouldn't it be bad to take off running and outrun people? And boy, you, 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 you running that race, but you don't, you are not nowhere near the finish line in you because you don't turn, made a wrong turn. He is the one that can order your steps. And there are no shortcuts. So once I say all that, now you have to begin to find the reason you was created. It's more than just service, church service and worship. And it is important to do that. Don't forsake that. But it's more than just Sunday and Wednesday. He gave you other days of the week. And he, he didn't give it to you to fill you up with prayer. He didn't give it up to fill you with a, 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 a whole bunch of church activity. That's not why he gave you seven days. Because these other days is meant for you to be uh, effective in the world. So, you, you okay, if you, you could, that's why I don't have people call me pastor, though I'm not a pastor anymore. You don't have to call me an apostle. I like when you call me Jesse. Because it reminds me that I also got an earthly assignment that may not be inside of a spiritual setting. So with that assignment, you have to pursue it. You have to pursue it as just a nice, clean word to say, you better go get it. And it ain't going to be easy. What good is football? We got a Super Bowl coming up. Well, who's going to watch? want to watch a Super Bowl that has no uh, excitement, that has no adversity? It, everybody just walking in. We just watched the Pro Bowl last week. One of the worst games you can ever watch because they don't tackle. They don't try to defend. Life is meant to, 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 to challenge you. And again, there are no shortcuts. You got to work harder than anyone else and you can't give up. You can pray. See, see lazy people want to just pray success. You can pray all day long. God told Joshua, why are you crying? Why are you praying? Why are you talking to me? Get up off your face and do what I told you to do. Go forward. That was God telling Joseph, Joshua, that was God telling Joshua, go pursue what I told you. Let your destiny that's in your mind, you know you got to go find the land that flow with milk and honey. Let it be your drip driving force in life. Let it wake you up. I want to talk to some people who are driven by your destiny. If you're driven by your destiny, there ought to be few hours. There ought to be many mornings that you wake up and you don't even need an alarm clock. You've got purpose on your mind. You're not sitting back finding the next club and the next place to go to and the next drink to get drunk with and the next drug to get high. Listen, you already getting high off your life because you know you got a place to be and a short time to get there. And you don't have time to waste. 
And the thing about it, this, so this message is not just for people who's 25. This message is for people who's 55, 65. Why do you think you're here just to babysit your grandbaby? Now, that's part of your destiny, too, because you're putting something. You have the opportunity to instill something into another generation that's going to outlive you. But I believe you got more in you than just that and making biscuits. God still has an assignment for your life. That's why you're here. So it's that to change the way you're thinking with that. There are no shortcuts to success. I want to keep saying that. You got to have that hustling mindset. Now, when I say hustling mindset, I'm talking about the positive connotation of that word. And I'm talking about how either you, you got to drive to obtain something energetic, not trying to do anything underhanded in my definition of hustling, but you driven that's what the world would say. You're in beast mode. I know I know a lot of people don't like that saying, but I'm just using that illustration. You got to be in beast mode. You got to be driven and committed to what you're trying to do. I don't make podcasts just because somebody making me do it. And sometimes the only person that need to be made to do it is I have to make myself to do it because I don't get a check every time I do a podcast. So I got to be driven more than just a dollar. There's so many people that got better in them, got more in them. But they, if they don't bring the money, I ain't doing the best thing I do because I ain't, I ain't get paid off of. You don't pay my bills. Let me tell you, man, life consists much more of you just paying your bills. Listen, I'm going to give you seven steps right now how to uh, be destiny driven and how to accomplish uh, or, or reach your destiny. And basically, how do you do that is you have to. This is the title of all of it. When I'm getting to seven points. You have to find a way not to increase your substance, but increase your value in life. Do you hear what I'm saying? Increase your value in life. One of the worst things or miss uh, one of the, 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 the things that are not true that we think is that we get paid by the hour. You don't really get paid by the hour. Now, I'm not stupid. But I'm still saying something profound. You really don't get paid by the hour. I know you think you do. You get paid by the value you bring to that hour. Let me break it down to you to convince you. Let's take a, a head surgeon and let's take a nurse who just accomplished whatever degrees she need to accomplish to be in the surgery room with that head surgery. So you have the, 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 the start off nurse and you got the head surgeon and both of them are in a five hour surgery, brain surgery. The, the surgeon is working on his brain and he says, um, uh, bring, give me a scaffold. And that nurse who went to school gives him a scaffold. Everything he asks for, everything he go to do, he asks, he says he need it, and she supplies it to him. It is a five hour surgery. At the end of that five hour surgery, both of them wash their hand, both of them walk out, both of them go home, both of them got paid five hours. But I bet you that check's not the same. They worked the same hour. Why did they not get the same hours? Why did they not get the same pay? Because one of them, uh, their value that they bring to that hour is greater. Do not worry about increasing your money and worry about increasing your value. Increase your value in life. Make yourself more valuable. And there are seven action steps that I found that I want to show you how to maximize your potential every day of your life and increase your value. Number one, remind yourself of the big picture. What is the reason you wake up? What's your reason for waking up? I'm going to say that again because I know that made you uncomfortable. What? Ask yourself. Pause. I ain't going nowhere. What is your reason for waking up? And it's got to be more than just to make the donuts. Old people get that. That's the old saying. Got to get up and make the donuts. So find the reason that you're here. Find the reason that you're doing what you're doing. Number two, create a plan. You were born, Zig Ziglar said, you were born to win. But to be a winner, you must plan to win. Prepare to win and expect to win. You got to have a plan. 
You got to have a plan. You got to have a plan. You don't just maximize your potential because you want to. But you must plan to. And without a plan, it's easy to stray from the course of getting things done. That will enable you to move forward in life. Try like planning your entire week. Take Sunday after you get through worshiping. And when you get home, let start thinking, okay, I'm getting ready to go another week. I got hurdles in front of me. A hurdle called Monday, a hurdle called Tuesday, etc. And I got to plan my entire week and use that day, Sunday evening, as a day of rest, but also a reflection as well. Set with some realistic goals for the week. Don't just say, I want to graduate college. You got to have long term goals, but you also need to have some short term goals. You sleep better when you have uh, maximized your day. When you know your day wasn't full of just gossip and running around and wasting, man, you feel accomplished. Number three. Treat time like it's gold. Either you run the day or your day going to run you. That's Jim Rohn. You've heard of cliches. Once time is spent, you don't get it back. That's true. If you have zero time management skills, then you, you're gonna be, it's going to be very difficult for you to pursue your destiny and accomplish it. Because you got to treat time like it's gold. Be, be better at time management. If that you saying that's me, I need to be better at time management. If that's you, then can I give you some advice? Then find you a book on time management that catches your attention in your eye and listen to it, read it. Where you're weak, sharpen it. If they gave you a sword and they say the tip of the sword is pretty sharp, but down in the middle is dull, you don't start sharpening the tip. Find the area you're dull in and sharpen it. Number four, become the most positive person you know. Quit hating on people. Quit worrying about what they're doing. Be positive. Only have people around you who are going to feed into your positivity. If you got everybody always bringing up, you know you ain't got much in your cup. Get off around them people and find people say, hey, man, you know you ain't far from the top filling your cup up. You going to get another one? Find people who are going to be positive, who their perspective is different. Number five, do one thing at a time. And while you're doing it, put your whole soul into it to the exclusion of all else. In other words, maximize what you're doing. Don't take 5% of you and give it here and 5% of you and give it here and 5% of you and give it here. here. When I say do one thing at a time, that don't mean just work one place and just sit there to that job over it and then you go to college. No, that means when you're working, put everything into it. When you're in class, put everything you got into it. When you're doing something else, put everything else you got into it. When you're trying to be spend time with your family, put everything you do not give people or give anything in your life. Have uh, half the effort. I want to say it another way, but I don't want to say it. Number six, don't forget to rest. This is something I'm still trying to learn myself. Rest is you can't maximize your potential if you don't have sufficient energy to, uh, during the day. Rest is vital and it's often overlooked. You got to find strategies to rest and relax. It's just as powerful you finding strategies to be more productive. Number seven, I love number seven. This is from Confucius. Make life simpler. Life is really simple, but we insist on making it complicated. Quit trying to clutter up everything and act like everything is so far out there and everything's so difficult. Life is really simple, more simple than you think it is. And so how do you really pursue your destiny? How do you win? How do you accomplish your goals? Little by little, day by day. That's how you do it. There is no elevator to success. Y'all have heard these things before. You have to take the stairs. And a lot, and it's a lot better when you're allowing God to, to, uh, to order your step, to establish your steps, show you, lead you what way to go. If he told me to do this, then I'm going to put everything I have into it. Successful people consistently do what normal people refuse to do. So my last advice is you might want to get off around some of these normal people who keep telling you to quit, who keep telling you you've done enough, who keep telling you, you know, you you need to maybe you need to reconsider and do this and that. Find you some wise people who are pursuing their destiny. 
not only is it good to go to church, but sometimes you may have to find your conference that's going to help ignite your passion so you can stand before God when it's all said and done and say that I didn't chase success more than I chased you. I chased you and in chasing you, I found my destiny and what I was created to do. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that this message is balanced to somebody, God, and I pray that it blesses them deeply. I pray right now that you allow them to hear the spirit of God speak to them and that their life may be successful by what you call successful, God. We give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. How bad do you How want it? Pursuing my destiny. Pursuing my destiny. Yeah. How bad do you want it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. From the pulpit to the podcast. Pursuing my destiny. Hey, business owners, this is Rashad Brown with Swipe Fast, located in Columbia, South Carolina. We are excited to be partnering with Jesse E. Canty in the How Bad Do You Want It podcast. Since 2017, Swipe Fast has been helping business owners like you save up to 99% in their debit and credit card processing fees. So if you process business to business or business to consumer payments, we have solutions that will meet your needs and would love to hear from you. You can reach us at swipefast.com forward slash save. That's Swipe, spelled with a Y, or contact us at 1-800-597-0713. Don't forget to let us know that Jesse E. Canty sent you. Have a blessed day.